Good day, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today on this webinar. Uh, we're going to be speaking about microoxygenation and oak alternatives uh, for use during your winemaking process. Uh, my name is Matt Wilson. I'm with the Nardis USA, and today I'm joined by Hamish Elmsley with the Wine Grenade. And we are going to be presenting uh, this webinar uh, over the course of the next 45 to uh, 50 minutes. So uh, thank you again uh, for joining us. The topics that we're going to cover today are going to be why it's important to utilize uh, microoxygenation in oak during your maturation program and throughout the process, uh, how that's going to impact your flavor profile, how it can benefit uh, your winemaking process, and especially in uh, in a time where more and more stainless steel tanks are being used, how it's being uh, optimized globally and here in the US. We're going to touch on the different products uh, from our Oak Encanto range. And then we will also touch on the different wine making uh, devices that are used uh, from our Wine IQ and the Wine Grenade. At the very end of the presentation, uh, we will have about 10 to 15 minutes of question and answer. Please do hold all your questions until the end uh, and we can address them individually. So I'm gonna introduce Hamish Elmsley with the Wine Grenade and he will go over this uh, next section. Great, thanks Matt and Hi everyone, I'm Hamish Elmsley, one of the founders of Wine Grenade and the guy mostly responsible for developing our product. Uh, so the intention with this presentation is really to build on your existing understanding of uh, wine maturation and to equip you with the knowledge that you need to either get started with microoxygenation or to level up your existing box program. I wanted to kick things off by pointing out that Oxygen is, uh, it has a role to play at every step along the winemaking process. Uh, you know, it's not just during fermentation or it's not just during maturation, but rather, you know, right from the start, right to the finish. Uh, and depending on, you know, how and when it's used, winemakers can expect to see different effects from increased resistance to oxidation, to stabilized color, to an improved aroma. Today's session is uh, just going to be focused on the last piece of the puzzle, where, uh, where we're going to use uh, oxygen and oak alternatives post MLF. So this is known as phase two oxygenation or uh, harmonization, as opposed to phase one or structurization. If we're going to be talking about uh, post malolactic maturation, we have to start by acknowledging the humble oak barrel. There's a certain kind of romanticism uh, associated with using the traditional uh, uh, methods in, in winemaking. But what is it about the barrel that's driving this thinking as opposed to any other kind of vessel? Well, the two main reasons that we like barrels so much are the extraction of flavors and tannins that come from the oak and the oxygen ingress that happens through the oak staves uh, and through other, uh, through other methods such as removing and replacing the bung. In this sense, you can kind of think of a barrel as a living, breathing vessel that's providing the oak profile and the oxygen in a kind of symbiotic way. But if barrels are so great, why isn't everyone maturing all of their wine all of the time in barrel? Well, as you can see, there are a few considerations for winemakers. If you're using oak barrels, uh, and in particular new oak barrels, and especially new French or American oak barrels, there's a lot of cost involved, uh, both upfront and, and, and ongoing in terms of labor. They take up a lot of space, which can be tricky if you're growing your volumes and are already at capacity. And each barrel needs to be treated as a unique, special individual, which makes it more onerous to keep on top of things like quality control, sanitation and sampling. So if we're not using barrels, what do we do instead? What's the best way to achieve the same benefits? To answer that, we need to look at the way or at what barrels are doing. We get small, subtle levels of ox oxygen diffusion through the staves, 
and we get the release of allegitannins, allegitannins, polysaccharides, and aromatic compounds from the oak. So if we want to repl uh, replicate what a barrel is doing for us, we can look at something like tank aging and microoxygenation. We're able to achieve the subtle diffusion of oxygen through microoxygenation systems, and we're able to use oak alternatives, uh, such as Anatus's and Canto range, to get the polysaccharides and the tannins. By using oak alternatives and oxygen together in that kind of symbiotic way, we're able to get the exact same benefits as a barrel. When we're maturing wine using these alternative kind of methods, understanding the importance of uh, the oak alternatives is kind of intuitive, right? You're substituting the oak in one format for another. But it's equally important to look at uh, the other critical ingredient in the process, uh, oxygen, and to take control over the way that the oxygen's interacting with the wine. The reasons for that are related to, uh, you know, controlling the stylistic direction of the wine uh, to prevent faults from uh, arising due to over oxygenation uh, and to get the oak integrated with the wine effectively. The way that we control those oxygen reactions is by utilizing modern technologies such as microoxygenation systems uh, by analyzing and measuring key parameters during the development of the wine and by implementing successful management techniques. Uh, we'll, be cover we'll be covering all of those in the, in the next section. But what do we stand to gain if we get it right? Well, by implementing the right kind of oak and oxygen program in your winery, you can expect to see some of these benefits here on screen. We'll revisit each, one, uh, each of these again when we're looking at recent trends within winemaking uh, in the US and around the world. Uh, but for now, I'd like to hand things back over to Matt uh, to discuss how to design the right kind of maturation program uh, to suit your individual goals. All right. Thank you, Hamish. So the, the steps that you want to take when you're defining your maturation program using uh, these alternatives um, is that you really want to start with a plan you need to know what you're trying to accomplish before setting out on the journey. And so if we look at, for example, how much you're looking to spend uh, to make this replacement, um, barrels are very expensive. And depending on where you purchase them from, like which region, French, uh, Eastern European, American, you're going to have different uh, cost effect on them. Neutral barrels, while a very affordable option, definitely do not impart the same amount of oxygen or flavor that you're going to be getting from a brand new barrel. So when we look at the alternatives, we'll look at uh, during the fermentation or early in the process is our Encanto and C range, which is a um, soluble oak uh, product, or our Encanto chips, you can see that the difference in price is very dramatic allowing for a very affordable application to a very large volume of wine. Then you need to think about what is the time frame of your maturation program. If you are attempting to give a flavor add that is going to be applied in a very short period of time, the Encanto chip range is very applicable for that. Even if you're trying to uh, mature your wine for a typical range of say 12 to 18 months, microoxygenation in combination with oak alternatives works extremely well by allowing you to adjust the rate as you go and increase or reduce the amount of oak applied at different time periods throughout the process. Then you also want to consider how does, as Hamish uh, pointed out, how does the oxygen and the oak actually interact inside the, the wine? The oxygen is going to directly impact how the polymerization of anthocyanins and tannins uh, are having this reaction. And the polymerization of tannins is really important because it allows for the softening of harsh uh, harsh or astringent tannins, uh, in which in turn enhances the mouthfeel and makes for a much softer, uh, more integrated wine. In terms of color, the, uh, the anthocyanins need to condense to become uh, a more permanent version of color that's not going to fall out or be unstable. 
So with the application of oxygen in combination with the tannins and the anthocyanins, you're able to stabilize color and produce a softer wine. So when looking at what you're trying to accomplish though, now we need to actually focus on the different application styles for the specific wine that you're defining. By looking at the grape varietal, you can recognize that certain wines are going to take towards a uh, much more structured approach. So if you look at something like a Cabernet Sauvignon, you can apply a much higher rate of oxygen. And typically uh, in barrel aging, that is done with a little bit higher amount of uh, new oak or a longer period of time. If we look at a, a little bit more delicate uh, varietal, such as a Pinot Noir, you don't want to apply the same amount of oxygen because you're not going to have the color compounds or the tannic structure to really uh, benefit from that application. Then if we look at uh, some traditional barrel aged white wines, Chardonnay absolutely can take uh, a small microoxygenation dose in combination with some, some oak alternatives. Looking at the style of wine that you're trying to produce, it's important to recognize uh, how you want to uh, approach the wine. Is it going to be an early release uh, red wine? You might be able to apply a little bit higher dosage of oxygen. That's perhaps outside the typical range that you would find in a barrel aging program, but you can do this due to the fact that it's going to be for a shorter period of time. Uh, with a red wine that needs to be aged before consumption, uh, something that's gonna go 16, 18 months, you can definitely go uh, for a longer period of time with a more conservative approach of the oxygen application rate. And a white wine, you definitely want to apply in uh, short periods of time, perhaps one month, and always, always uh, use analysis and sensory notes to really uh, guide you along this process. Another important factor to take in mind is how oxygen is taken up throughout the process of making wine via pumping, racking, filtration, uh, uh, cold stabilization. In fact, with cold stabilization, it's going to be the highest amount of dissolved oxygen that's going to be uh, in a wine, which is part of the reason why our Zenith line was produced in order to reduce the need for cold stabilization and allow for a stable, uh, cold stable tartrate free uh, wine. So when looking at these points, you also have to understand that you're going to be uh, getting a DO pickup throughout these processes. And so we need to adjust the application rate accordingly. Here is a, a pretty general um, formula that we use to understand what is your current barrel program and how are you looking to uh, replace it with microox and oak alternatives. So what we would do is we would take the typical barrel aging program and as an example you can see right, uh, right here that in this example what we're doing is we're taking the amount of new American barrels, the amount of new French barrels, and the amount of neutral barrels and we're understanding the typical rates that they are applying uh, over the course of a year. So while some bar uh, all barrels are different, uh, American oak barrels typically apply between 24 and 36 milligrams per liter. So we're taking an average here of 30 milligrams per liter over the course of the year. Same with French, they can apply anywhere from about 15 to 25 and uh, neutral barrels can be about five up to about 15. And this is, again, it's generalized due to the fact that all barrels are different. But if we take 10% new American, 10% new French, and 80% neutral barrels, which is what we see in a lot of different facilities, uh, you will get, uh, by doing this formula, you'll get 13 milligrams to be applied over the course of a year. If you break that down by month, you'll end up with 1.1 milligrams per liter per month. That's a fairly uh, conservative approach, but we would rather go that route um, until you are much more familiar with the process 
and also are much more comfortable applying uh, levels of up to two milligrams per liter per month or three milligrams per liter per month. All right. Oh, sorry. No. Hold on one sec. Sorry, guys. All right. So when we're looking at oxygen guidelines, this goes right back to what I was saying before. It's a much better idea to go with a conservative application rate, um, such as 0.5 to 4 milligrams per liter per month, depending on the style of wine, uh, the, the maturation program, and what, uh, what type of grape varietal you're looking at. So when we uh, start uh, applying oxygen, what we'll typically do in combination with our oak alternatives is we'll apply a very, uh, we'll apply the oak alternatives and we'll wait for a couple of weeks to allow them to integrate. And then we'll start the treatment at one to four milligrams per liter per month. And we'll apply that for a couple of weeks with uh, analysis and sensory in between to verify that it's going along and progressing as uh, desired. Then we'll adjust the rate either up or down uh, based on what uh, the sensory uh, profile is coming back as. And then we'll apply that for as long as needed and finish with a little bit lower rate. This allows for any, uh, any other oxygen uptake uh, points where it's going to increase the DO and whatnot, such as a barrel to barrel transfer or a tank to tank transfer, filtration, anything of that sort. It will allow for uh, the adjustment along the way. I mean, this is really, as, uh, as Hamish said about the barrels, this is also a living, breathing uh, process that needs to be addressed and adjusted as, as needed and fine tuned. Now, one of the key things in designing this program and understanding how you're going to apply is recognizing your space needs. Typical barrel uh, maturation programs, they do take up a lot of space and they also require a lot of uh, handling, barrel maintenance, things of that sort, topping, SO2 ads. So when we're looking at space, what we see is that in a, uh, a typical setup, let's just say a nice small stack of three, you're going to be using five feet or six feet of space uh, to allow uh, topping and whatnot. And then it's gonna be 10 feet tall. If you take that same uh, space and apply it to a tank, then a two stack of barrels side by side and two of those tanks, you can see that the amount that you're able to process with the same Microx device and using oak chips instead, dramatically increases. So this is an extremely scalable process where if you're treating a very small volume of wine or an extremely large volume of wine, we're able to do it across any size tank where the space that's used in barrels would increase dramatically. So taking advantage of that vertical height and also uh, you know, the ability to put tanks directly next to each other. We're gonna talk very briefly here about sensory and analysis and uh, identifying a timeline that you want to maintain uh, this during the application. So sensory and analysis should be done one to two days per week with notes uh, when first beginning. Dissolved uh, oxygen, DO, should definitely be taken at least once. We recommend twice weekly as you're getting uh, yourself familiar, but as you uh, become more familiar with the process, you can definitely uh, take uh, all of your analysis once per week. VA, same thing, SO2, once per week uh, at a minimum, if not more, and tasting as well. When you're tasting and doing your sensory, you should definitely keep an eye on the different parameters to, uh, to monitor. You're going to look at uh, the degree of oxidation reduction, uh, whether or not you're overcoming a green and vegetal, and that's where the oak alternatives really comes in. Uh, you want to make sure that there's still that varietal essence, uh, the character of the wine that is going to be there. How is the tannin uh, evolving? Is it uh, shifting towards more uh, longer in the mouth, softer, uh, more structured? And what's the volume? And by tasting 
on a weekly basis, as well as taking your notes, you can start to see a graph that covers uh, how the aromas evolve from early in the process during the fermentation to post-fermentation to kind of the ideal uh, application. And then if, uh, if as, as oxygen continues, it's possible to always over, uh, overuse it. So we always recommend tasting, tasting, tasting so that you can see along the way. Same thing with uh, how, the, how the body is. So the best way to do that is to set yourself up with a calendar. Apply your oak, start your microox, and uh, then you're gonna do your centuries once per week, your analysis once per week, and we always recommend to do your analysis at a time period where you still, this is done on Thursday, where you still have another day to make any changes. If you do your analysis on a Friday or you're tasting on a Friday, but you don't uh, actually make any changes, it's gonna go the entire weekend. So that's why we recommend sensory early in the week, analysis later on in the week. Uh, that way, anything that you find in sensory can be addressed uh, in analysis or backed up. And once a month, if you can take a sample throughout the weeks for your, for your sensory and keep them, once a month, you can actually see the evolution throughout the weeks. Continue doing uh, sensory. Once you understand the analysis, you can actually break it up into once every couple weeks uh, as needed. Obviously, uh, SO2 monitoring should be done at the intervals that you typically do. Now, on this next section, I'm going to just kind of gloss over these parts due to the fact that uh, these are known parameters that we recommend monitoring weekly. Uh, and these guys are what we monitor on a monthly basis. These are very important, but definitely, I mean, we can develop those as, as needed with each different program. Super important considerations are to stay vigilant. Always, always, always do your analysis and tasting. Uh, we expect to see no accumulation of dissolved oxygen. Definitely try to maintain it uh, less than 0.8 on most red wines. However, we recommend, I mean, much lower levels as the lower, the better. Uh, SO2 management, uh, there is oxygen interacts directly with SO2 and there will be a fall off of SO2, but it's important to understand that the free SO2 maintains itself right around 25 parts per million. So you don't necessarily wanna add 35. And if it gets below 20, definitely stay on top of that. Same thing with spoilage microbes. There shouldn't be an increase of any VA. Uh, we recommend it at less than 0.6 grams per liter. Um, definitely uh, plating is advised if you have the capabilities. And if you have any concerns, we always recommend using our ketosan based uh, stab micro or stab micro M during the process. Some of the potential risks, as we mentioned before, uh, is an over application of oxygen. Uh, it's the potential for a color loss. However, that's going to be on extremely long term application. Uh, development of those uh, aldehydic flavors. There's the potential for an increase of VA if you uh, have microbes present uh, and excessive dryness of the overuse of tannins. So if you see any of these issues, just hit a quick pause, take a step back, do some more analysis and sensory and define whether or not it's time to continue forward. If, uh, if it turns out that it is time to stop, just press the stop button. There's no reason to, to overstep the bounds, allow the wine to, uh, to speak for itself. So now I'm gonna turn it back over to Hamish for some global and uh, local examples here in the US. Thank you, Matt. So, uh... One of the cool things about the Wine Grenade um, is that each of our devices is internet connected, um, which gives us a pretty unique view of how our product is being used in different places around the world. Uh, and I'd like to share some of those insights with you now uh, before covering off a couple of specific examples from Australia and New Zealand. Uh, in Australia, um, as, as you can see here, what we see is, is primarily color and body management uh, and softening of mouthfeel. 
Uh, we've noticed some perception in this market that microoxygenation is only used in cooler climates to manage green characteristics. Uh, but that's an attitude that's changing as more and more producers switch from using barrels to oak alternatives. Uh, one of our customers in Australia, Chapel Hill Wines, uh, has used microoxygenation very successfully in their Cabernet program, uh, which contributed to them winning best Cabernet at the Royal Sydney Wine Show recently. Um, they've subsequently been expanding their use of the technology in their operations. And uh, that's something that I think uh, a lot of the other local wineries in the area are taking note of. In France, uh, we've seen some interesting developments there where our technology is being used to oxygenate new French oak barrels um, in an effort to replace the process of clicage. Uh, that's now something that we're able to offer as a standard feature on our micro-oxygenation devices. In California, we're seeing a lot of people softening tannins, uh, often for bulk wine lots, but also enhancing body and sweetness, particularly with the use of oak. In the northern parts of the US, with the cooler climate, we see those green herbaceous characters coming through and winemakers wanting to address those with the use of oxygen. Diving a little bit deeper into the US market specifically, uh, I wanted to share the results of a recent customer survey that Wine Grenade undertook. One thing that I personally found interesting with these results is um, that it really challenges the perception that some people have that Microox is mostly used to accelerate the maturation of wine. Um, as you can see here, that was only a consideration for a small number of respondents um, with, uh, with early release down the bottom there, yeah, only, only getting a couple of, uh, well, 10% of people saying that that was um, one of the... Uh, one of the things they were looking to achieve by using the wine grenade. Uh, as a side note, the follow-up question in this particular survey um, was, uh, was asking the respondents to what extent the wine grenade was successful in helping them achieve these goals. Uh, and every single person scored either a four or a five out of five. So it really does show that um, with the right tools and the right uh, plan in place, um, winemakers can be really successful in, in achieving these outcomes. Turning now to the first of a couple of examples where wineries have been really successful in their application of oxygen and oak. Uh, the first is a winery called Fox Creek Wines in McLaren Vale in Australia. They were working with uh, Shiraz and the protocol they had in place was five months of oxygen at two milligrams per litre per month uh, and the equivalent of 10% of new oak through chips that were added to the tank. Um, as you can see, taking a look at that spider chart, the results here are pretty clear cut. Uh, there was a strong preference for the wine grenade and oak treatment across all of the characteristics that were being measured. Uh, the two there where the red line is uh, inside the green one um, indicate uh, reduced bitterness and reduced astringency. So yeah, really great results there. Turning now, uh, taking a look at a New Zealand wine. This, uh, this one's a Hawke's Bay Pinot Noir. This particular trial ran for a period of 10 weeks at a rate of one milligram per litre per month. Uh, during the trial, uh, during this particular trial, we had blind tastings, under, uh, blind tastings undertaken by the chief winemaker and the head of red winemaking on a weekly basis. Uh, the wine grenade sample was consistently preferred through those weekly tastings uh, throughout the course of the trial. And at the completion, we had a panel of independent winemakers undertake uh, another tasting and they reached the same conclusion. So again, looking at the spider chart, um, what you're seeing here is an aggregate of the scores that those that panel of independent winemakers provided. And again, you can see uh, positive gains across all of those, uh, those attributes that were being measured. So at this point, uh, I'd like to hand things over to Matt again, who's going to talk about choosing the best oak product for your needs. Yes, sir. So when we're talking about our oak alternatives uh, from our Encanto range, what we want to emphasize is that there's a different product for different needs. And so if we're looking at uh, the those different products, it's it's important to recognize, uh, do you want to apply in a very short period of time? Do you have a little bit more time or are you looking for a longer term uh, maturation with the oak uh, product? So 
We're going to start out with our Encanto NC, which is a soluble oak product. It's extremely efficient at uh, integrating into the wine, and it allows for uh, a very uh, refined approach during the fermentation period and just at the very end of fermentation. You're getting no disposal, zero waste. It can go through pumps. It can go through uh, your entire system. It's not going to damage any equipment, and it's extremely uh consistent and very reliable. We have a few different products in our Encanto NC range, which allow for a refinement of uh, toasting profile, uh, whether or not you're looking for a little bit more of an elevated red fruit profile, um, some darker flavors. The dark chocolate is fantastic. Uh, it does have a higher toast, but that adds a more of a structural approach that we typically see in Australian and, uh, and American style uh, California based wines. So this, these can also be applied into uh, white wines uh, as needed. And so you can really refine the, the oak approach with this, uh, this method. As we move over to our Encanto uh, chips, they, uh, they offer a very wide variety of toasting profiles very consistent in the uh, the toasting um, quality, and these are so easy to do a bench trial that uh, I mean, really, in just a few weeks, you can get a very good understanding of how your wine is going to uh, uh, accept the flavor that you're getting from the uh, the different chips, and you can also do blends. I'll touch on that in a second. Uh, and there's a lot of flexibility on these. I mean, you can apply a, a chip program you know, one month, apply it with your Microx, and then uh, down the road, you can apply a second time. Give it, uh, you know, that boost in flavor. One of the key, uh, the ideas behind the chips and how they're able to get the flavor profile and really um, get it into the wine very efficiently is surface area. So typical barrel aging is done with the surface area inside the barrel and the amount of uh, area that the wine is actually able to touch and also how far into the stave it's able to penetrate. So when you look at that, uh, you can see that the amount on, in that photo on the left of the stave that the wine is penetrating is relatively minimal. Where on the oak chips, you have all sides as well as uh, the different pores uh, that allow for the wine to integrate fully. So you're getting that maximum extraction of flavor which very much allows for, in four to six weeks, a very uh, good integration of the oak. As I mentioned before, there's a variety of flavors um, and profiles uh, depending on what you're looking for, whether you're looking to enhance the mouthfeel, enhance structure, uh, add more of a uh, red fruit flavor or a spice flavor, or really get that high toast profile. Uh, very much depends on the style and the profile of wine that you're going for. And as you move forward to define which of the, the different oak chips or the Encanto and C you would like to use, it's important to set up a quick and easy bench trial. You can easily do this by measuring out the amount of oak that, you're will, that you would like to use in an appropriate uh, uh, container. And then you uh, will just take that and fill her up with wine. You'll wait uh, three to four weeks and you can wait all the way up to about six weeks. And then you'll do your tasting. The tasting is actually going to be very uh, informative because each of the different chip profiles allows you to taste individually. You can taste at different levels of addition. And then you can also create a final blend by taking one chip profile and another chip profile and blending those two together to create a final chip profile that will allow you to understand the recipe that you'll be using moving forward. Very, uh, very encouraging to do this so that you understand where you're going down the road. I'm going to briefly touch on our Wine IQ, which is our new Microx system. And then I'll turn it over to Hamish to go over the uh, wine grenade. So uh, our micro-oxygenation systems, as Hamish mentioned, are meant to be 
uh, very uh, accurate, easy to apply, and very rugged inside the uh, the wine the winery facility. There's a lot of water. There's a lot of banging on that goes around. Uh, having these mounted up on the catwalk or at a tank, uh, you really want that protection. So our new Wine IQ system is a single output dosing system that's uh, made of a rugged polycarbonate uh, IP66 rated um, enclosure. And it features a seven inch touchscreen for control locally at the device. More importantly though, is that it does have a network capable connection via Wi-Fi or an ethernet connection, which allows you to easily control it on a tablet, a PC, uh, your phone from anywhere connected on the network. So we have uh, facilities that are using it. Uh, they walk around from uh, tank to tank, verifying uh, how the application is going. They use it on a Surface Pro uh, they can app, uh, they can access it in their uh, their office or the laboratory, making it a very effective way to monitor the application throughout the period of uh, the Microx program. One uh, other feature on the the WinIQ uh, system is the fact that it is uh, user defined access, allowing for uh, unique um, usernames and passwords to ensure that uh, it's only controlled by those that the facility uh, would like. Additionally, uh, it's applicable from 10,000 uh, gallons up to 650,000 gallons, which is a very wide range of volumes. But key feature of that is that it's scalable. So one single device can control from 10,000 up to 650,000 gallons of oxygen being applied from as little as 0.1 milligrams per liter per month up to eight milligrams per liter per month. So now let's go over to Hamish to outline the uh, wine grenade information. Thank you, Matt. So uh, the wine grenade was really born out of uh, some feedback that uh, the company founders were getting from within the wine industry. And that feedback was essentially that winemakers you know, really understood the power of using oak alternatives and oxygen together in that kind of symbiotic relationship. Uh, but that, that there were a number of hurdles preventing them from taking the leap into micro-oxygenation. And that was especially true for small to medium-sized wineries. Some of the things that we heard were that existing micro systems were costly, they were complicated, uh, they were prone to things like clogging and leaks and other problematic features. And so we set about designing a system that essentially removed all of those barriers for uh, for winemakers. So the wine grenade is designed to be a smart, simple, affordable solution for winemakers to incorporate oxygenation into their cellars. Uh, it uses sensors and Internet of Things connectivity to operate. It can be installed in under 15 minutes and is priced at under $1,000. Uh, the other unique attribute is the way that oxygen is diffused into wine. We've designed our products to really mimic the way that a barrel breathes uh, through osmosis, except instead of diffusing oxygen through the oak staves, we diffuse it through a semi-permeable tube that's suspended inside your tank or barrel. Uh, and just like a barrel, there are no bubbles. So the whole thing is uh, super easy to use. Um, it can genuinely be set up in, in under 15 minutes. And for anyone uh, listening that doesn't believe me, I can send you our installation video, which takes you from start to finish in 12 minutes flat. Uh, once you've got your unit set up at the tank, uh, you simply connect it to Wi-Fi and use our web application to tell the device what you want it to do. Uh, the other neat thing that we've done is invented in what we call an active float system. Um, uh, to get that permeable tubing moving around the inside of your tank. And you can kind of, the easiest way to think about it is like a pool shark, moving around to ensure that you get a, a really good distribution of oxygen across the entire volume of wine. Uh, so on top of uh, all of the benefits that you get from micro-oxygenation, which Matt and I have, have obviously discussed at length uh, throughout the course of this presentation, 
Um, with Wine Grenade, it's also super easy to get those benefits. Um, there's a low upfront cost, so it's a great way for um, uh, for people to get started with microoxygenation. There's no cleaning or maintenance needed. Um, you can move it around the cellar as you need. It's really adaptable. Um, and as a bonus, we'll let you know if anything happens or if you need to take any actions like um, replacing an empty oxygen cylinder. So that added level of customer service um, is, is completely free of charge. So another cool thing about the wine grenade is, uh, and, and the fact that it uses that membrane diffusion is that we can put that tubing inside of a barrel uh, to oxygenate a barrel. It's the exact same device, just with a custom manifold that runs oxygen to up to a dozen barrels at once. We've seen some really amazing results in Napa and Bordeaux with this kind of setup. And uh, yeah, I'm personally really excited to see more of this, uh, this kind of installation here in the US. And on that note, I'd like to uh, throw the mic back over to Matt uh, to wrap things up. Yep, we are done, guys. So <clears throat> just to recap, how to achieve the success with a microoxygenation program and oak alternatives, always start with a plan. Uh, make sure to do a lot of analysis, do sensory analysis and tastings. Recognize the risk. Be flexible. You know, if if you start to see a development uh, that's going down a road that you like, keep going. If you don't like it, take a pause. Always understand that you're in control of this and that it's not just uh, running away from you. If you ever have a problem, take corrective action. Give us a call. We're here to support you. Hamish is here to support you. I'm here to support you. Our sales rep, our entire technical team. Uh, we have other webinars uh, that we've done on this. All of our webinars are fantastic. Uh, we've put together a pretty great um, uh, stable of different webinars from nutrition to cold stability to microbial stability. Check them out. Go to our website. Check them out. And thank you very much for participating today. I would now like to open up our Q&A session uh, for anybody who uh, has any questions.